Welcome little scientists, it's Miss Gisa, and today I have a story for you that has to do with, do you remember what this is? Horseshoe crab, that's right. Our story today is called Moonlight Crab Count, and it's written by Dr. Needy Batala and Jennifer Keats Curtis, and illustrated by Veronica Jones. Full moon, check. High tide, check. Flashlight, check. Clipboard, check. Thermometer, check. Dog biscuit, woof. As the full moon rises high in the sky, Lena and her dog, Bobby, climb into the boat. Lena clicks the buckles of her life vest and mom revs the engine. Lena unties the line from the dock to cast off. The trio skims the small waves and heads out into the bay. In the moonlight, Lena can just make out the island ahead. Dropping the thermometer into the water by its string, Lena checks the temperature and records important data on her clipboard. Date, June 18th. Time, 9.29 p.m. Water temperature, 23.2 degrees Celsius. Wind speed, 6 miles per hour. Mom beaches the boat right into the sand. Lena and Bobby hop off. As mom secures the anchor, Bobby bounds along the shore, barking as water wets her paws. With mom behind her, Lena walks across the sand. As she stoops to pick up a pretty scalloped shell, Lena sees something strange. Bobby spies it too. She hurries to investigate, woofing at the creature that looks like half a brown basketball with bumpy eyes, sharp spines, and a pointy sword. Laughing, Lena pats her dog. Don't be scared, Bobby. That's no ocean alien. It's a horseshoe crab. Bobby sits and wags her tail. Together, they examine the odd creature. Carefully holding the hard horseshoe crab by his sides, Lena flips him over. She counts five sets of wiggly pincers and notes that the first pair looks like boxing gloves. This crab is a boy. Using his hinge, he arcs and bends in half, madly waving his spiky tail. Lena isn't worried. That tail isn't dangerous. The horseshoe crab needs it to steer while he is swimming. If a wave flips him over on the beach, he can stab his tail into the ground to hinge and right himself. Lena gently puts the horseshoe crab back into the water amazed that she has picked up a living fossil. These ancient creatures are more closely related to spiders and scorpions than to true crabs. They have been around since dinosaurs roamed the planet. Their bodies look almost the same now as they did back then. During full and new moons in late spring and summer, female horseshoe crabs come onto shore to lay green pearl-shaped eggs in the sand. Smaller males attach themselves to the females and are pulled over the nests to fertilize the eggs. Babies hatch in a few weeks. Although peculiar, horseshoe crabs are quite important. Fishers use them as bait. Medical companies use their special blue blood to test medicines, making sure they are free of germs that could make us sick. Young sea turtles and migratory birds eat the horseshoe crab's green eggs. Without these eggs, one shorebird in particular, the red knot, would become extinct. The red knot has one of the longest migrations of any animal from South America to the Arctic. By the time these birds reach the East Coast, they are nearly starving. They gorge on the eggs to gain enough weight to finish their travels. Experts worry that horseshoe crabs are disappearing. It is important to know how many there are. So all along the eastern seaboard, volunteers help count horseshoe crabs. Each summer, Lena and her mom check the little beach near their home. As they walk around the bend of the island, Lena flips on the flashlight and hands mom the clipboard. Just in time, as it turns out, they are on the sand 
and in the shallow water are hundreds of horseshoe crabs. How will they count all of them? Fortunately, Lena and her mom have had a lot of practice. They don't have to count every single crab. They just have to estimate. On beaches where thousands of horseshoe crabs come ashore, lots of volunteers come out. They use special equipment like a square frame called a quadrant to accurately count as many of the crabs as possible. On this tiny beach, fewer horseshoe crabs come calling. Lena and her mom will tally the number of horseshoe crabs between posted signs to ballpark how many crabs have come to their beach. Before they can start counting, Lena must do something important. Sit, Bobby, she signs. Cocking her head, the big dog sits. Now Lena and mom can survey. Without disturbing the horseshoe crabs, Lena calls out one female, two males, three burrowed, two swimming. One female, four males, four burrowed, one swimming, two upside down. Mom quickly and carefully records the numbers on her clipboard. Lena counts crabs while mom writes down the data. Bobby doesn't even bark once. By the time they finish counting, many of the horseshoe crabs have crawled back out into the bay. By morning, most of the crabs will be gone. Lena sits on the beach while mom looks at their data. Bobby quietly pads over to Lena and nudges her hand. Lena hugs her dog. It's time to go home. Good night, horseshoe crabs, whispers Lena. Woof, barks Bobby. Then, in the back, you can learn more about the horseshoe crabs as well as where they lay their eggs in Delaware Bay. Then, further on, there is information about Dr. Nidhi Batala, one of the authors of this story, who is an ecologist and studies these great creatures. I hope you enjoyed the story today. Please join me again soon. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.